Hi, this is Blake Angelos from Yamaha Corporation America, here with my good friends from Synthopia, and I'd like to talk about the MX-88. So the MX-88 is the latest addition to the MX line. We also have the MX-49 and the 61, but the 88 is really something special because it, it is the 88 notes. So it's based on kind of three sort of guiding principles, I would like to say. Um, it has great action, so it has the graded hammer action, so very nice feel. It has a, uh, a sound set that's derived from the motif um, XF, XS level, so it's got a lot of those sounds, including full concert grand, which is the piano I'm about to play here. And then it also has really cool connectivity, it has connectivity to the computer. Um, it comes with Cubase AI, but uh, it also has connectivity to iOS. So we also have a product called FM Essential, and I'll show that in a little bit. It's a free app that anyone can download that has an iOS device, such as you know, an iPod Touch or an iPhone, which I'll show it here, or an iPad. And uh, it's an FM synthesizer that's free, and I'll show you a little bit about that here in a second. So the first thing, let's talk about the feel and the sound. The one thing that's great is that they really did a good job um, doing some edits to the sound to make it really um, uh, balanced with the action. So it's a very dynamic piano. It's very um, expressive. When I want to play... If I want to play loud, it gets loud, but it's also very expressive for soft one. So just a really, really gorgeous sound. And you, you kind of would expect that from a company that's making pianos for as long as we have. So great piano sound, but it has a host of a lot of other just amazing sounds. Again, it comes from the, the, the DNA of the, of the motif. So we have some other things in here like, you know, electric pianos. <laughs> has the bite in the low end. So that's one of the electric pianos. There's also one in here that I like to play is. So that's the whirly sound. The whirly sound you hear, it's going through a kind of a distortion effect. That's because this also features some of the virtual circuitry modeling effects that come from the motif. So you have a lot of those really nice vintage sounds that uh, or vintage effects that only kind of VCM can bring. In fact, I'll show you another one here. There's, I have a clavinet in here. Now, I also have an FC7 attached, which is our expression pedal. Usually people use FC7 for things like volume control, but I can ass assign it to the pedal wah effect. And the thing that's cool is that it has, you know, about 200 built-in rhythms, maybe a little more than that, actually. And it has arpeggios, and I'll show you some of that as well. But um, with the rhythms, you can always come up with a, with, with a groove that, you know, when you kind of are inspired, like if I'm playing this. And then I can turn on the, the, the rhythm pattern in here and... So having, you know, a built-in rhythm immediately, I can grab it and I have something to, you know, be inspired by. I'll play a little bit more of the per, of some of those performances that have that. I'll kind of show it with the computer connectivity here in a second as well. We also have, obviously, since it is a motif level engine in a lot of ways. So lots of those things like choirs, very dynamic string sections. love the fact that it has that dynamicism that really made the motif such a great a great piece really dynamic sounds um, of course there's tons and tons of you know guitars and so on lots and lots of sounds choices of sounds in here I'm um, kind of move forward a little bit and grab a 
you know, I've been using this kind of to show, to show this, this particular thing called Downwit Dat. It's one of the performances. So let's talk about performances. There's 128 performance locations. And what a performance is, similar to kind of how the montage works, a performance can contain up to 16 sounds. So it's always in a multi-timbral state. And then each of those sounds are called parts. And you can select parts very simply right off the front panel. It actually has a category search in here to grab those sounds. The very first uh, performance in here is called MX Category. And you can always get to MX Category no matter what what state the instrument's in. If I hold shift and hit select, it takes me right to that first MX category. And then these MX categories are right here. So I have piano. If I want to say, oh, I want to check out the basses. There's just bass sounds and so on. So you can get to that. If I want to layer the keyboard, I turn on the layer and now I've layered the instrument. But I'm going to go to the piano first so I don't layer the bass. But as soon as I hit layer, now I have a piano with layered to this or I can split the keyboard. So it's always right in front of you to grab these things very quickly. Um, as I move forward here, let me go up to the down with dat sound. So this is one I've been using on the, on the live stream that we've been doing here at Superbooth, where I, I, and I remember specifically when I was doing this, I just started playing this sound. I thought that was pretty cool. But I wanted to know what it sounded like with the drum groove. So this is a split sound. So I have that bass that has the art playing on this hand. And then on the top voice, I have this. So as I put them kind of together, I got this, you know. So it's just like two fingers, which is great. You know, I just, but it sounded kind of cool. But, you know, the content in the instrument is only as good as, as, um, as, you know, if it just sits here, it just sits here. If you want to be inspired, you want to be able to take that content and do something with it. So that's what's great about having Cubase. So you can download a copy of Cubase AI. It, it is part of the instrument for either Mac or PC. And you see when it opens up, it's asking me, do I want to use this as my audio interface? Well, yes, I do, because it's also a two-channel audio interface to the computer. Stereo, stereo return. Stereo send, stereo return. So here's my song in here. And what I did with this particular song in here is I recorded the drum groove and I recorded the arpeggios as separate audio tracks. So then I have them in the computer. Now I could start it right here and you'll hear immediately it's coming into the, uh, from the computer through the audio out. So there's the digital connection here. But I don't want to use this. I want to be able to hit this button that says DAW remote. Everything, there's kind of a, a, a gray highlight here that shows all the things that are um, connected to Cubase. And it's sort of like we have these little, uh, Steinberg has a controller, the CI series controllers that have these little AI knobs and ways to start and stop things. Well, that's what this is. It's a control surface as well. So I can start my, my sequence here. If I want to move it forward to where the groove starts, I can touch this little jog button. It takes the data wheel and turns it into a jog shuttle. So I can move directly to where I want to get into the song and I'll get right where I started with the, the drum groove in. And I'm playing exactly what I played before, but now it's in the computer. Now it's ready for me to start some production. So with this one, I kind of was feeling like I wanted to have, um, have, have a bridge. And since I was already here, I got, I'm going to turn off everything, um, the rhythm pattern and so on, and I have, so I can just play the, the bass line in here. As I move forward in here, this is where I kind of played in another, another kind of uh, a groove here, but it's my groove, you know. So I'll get to that part in the song. You'll see I have MIDI tracks in here. Well, I muted those out because I've already rendered them. I play the MIDI tracks in and I get them kind of how I want if I want to quantize them and fix my bad mistakes or whatever. I can do that in here and then I can render that as an audio file. And this is what I came up with for a... Let me get to where I'm at the song here. Here's the bridge right here. So I just kind of, I used the, the little arpeggio still, but I played a little different thing. But now, now I have kind of the framework for a song. I can now go over here, pull up a virtual instrument if I want to, add that, or I could use one of the great sounds from the MX as well, record that as MIDI, and then render that. So that's, the, that's kind of the third thing. So you have the great feel, great sounds, and then this connectivity. And there's one little aspect of the connectivity that's very cool about this particular instrument, and that is FM Essential. So this right here, there's actually a couple of these now that Apple makes, and this is called a, a lightning to USB connector. So I'm going to unplug this from my computer and connect my 
connector here, and then it has the lightning cable that goes right into iOS. Now immediately I'm connected. And the, just a side note, what's cool about this is that if I have Spotify or I have iTunes, I can now play my music through these audio outs. So it's just a nice way to plug this in. I can listen to music straight up. But the cool thing is FM Essential. So um, let's see, I want to get to FM Essential, which is right, in fact, right here. So this is FM Essential. FM Essential is a free app for iOS and anybody can download it, but when you download it, you have some limitations at first. You only get 10 sounds and you don't have the ability to save. So you get kind of a taste of what this can do um, in the iOS app. But as soon as you plug it into any of the MX, the MX-49, the black one, the blue one, or the white one, the 49 or the 61, or the brand new MX-88, it unlocks this app, and you have access now to over 250 sounds and the ability to save, and it's a, quite a powerful app. Cool things about this app, just as a side note, they actually modeled some of the vintage FM synthesizers like the TX-81Z, the V50, and the DX-100, and they modeled the actual audio output so it has the flavor and the character of that vintage synth. The one that I think is really cool is the TX-81Z. That was used on countless records and it's still used today. It's kind of a sought after piece, especially in electronic music. I went and saw an electronic music concert and fully 60% of the sounds that were, that were uh, in, the, in the music were done by FM because I can hear that sound. So now I have this connected here and there's some cool FM um, MX88, 61, 49 combinations. So when I select this first one, electric piano pad, what it does is it sends, um, it sends some bulk information to the MX. And you'll hear this being... So, the sound of the electric piano... The sound of the FM piano is coming from FM Essential. So it's an audio and MIDI connection to the, um, to the instrument from the phone here. And then the sound of the pad is coming from the MX. Now the other cool thing is that there's these control knobs over here. These control knobs um, do a number of things. They control obviously the internal sounds. You can control cutoff frequency and resonance of the filter, chorus and reverb send, ADSR attack, sustain, attack, decay, sustain, release of the amplitude envelope, volume, pan, and there's two assignables that control internal. But it also does double duty as being a control surface for FM Essential. So if I move these two, and I'll kind of hold this up so you can see it, as I move this one, there's a ball controller here that moves multiple parameters. So, so it's controlling some cool multiple parameters in here, but I can also control them here. I have the XY axis with these two. This is cutoff frequency and resonance of the filter. Another side note is that FM didn't have filters, but they added a resonant filter in here. And if I move these two, you can see that it controls the filters in here as well. If I move down, I can control actually the the um, level of the of the operators. It's a four operator FM synth, and if you select any of these algorithms, if you know anything about FM synthesis, here's a little brief thing. There's two there's two elements or two um, aspects, I guess. I don't want to use the word element because that's another word we use for in here. Anyway. There's two aspects, carriers and modulators. A carrier is the one that makes the sound. That's the one that's, that's the one you, that you hear in FM. The modulator is what affects the sound. And as you change the frequency of the modulator, you develop these sideband partials or extra upper harmonics. And then that's what generates the different sounds that FM makes. So if you select the ones here that are modulators, which are the square ones here, that changes drastically the sound if I move FM level on some of these guys. So you have control over those things. So real-time control over FM is another very cool aspect of this, uh, of this, this connection here. So, um, so that's pretty much a good tour of the MX-88. So great feel, great sound, cool computer connectivity. The last thing I'll say about this is, well, I'm in Europe, so I'm going to say how much it weighs in, uh, in the metric system. So 13 kilograms about, it's about 31 pounds for everyone in the United States, so it's extremely light. But it's very strange when you come and you, and you play this instrument, how, how solid it feels, and then you pick it up. Everybody that picks it up is like, this is really light. So if you're playing a gig, you can take it easily, pick it up, take it to the gig, and you don't have to hurt your back moving stuff around. And it has you know, high quality sound enough, so you know, it works in a professional setting, no problem. Um, the other thing, the last thing I'll say, it's extremely affordable. So um, yeah, just check it out, you know, at your local music store anywhere, and 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 you'll 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 see just how awesome this product is. Um, so that's it. That's the MX88. Great feel, great sound, great connectivity. 
I'm Blake Angels here on Syntopia. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.